Hey guys, hello everyone and welcome to the channel. So till the time CSIR has released their result, there are a lot of confusion, lot of doubt, lot of question, especially about category three of the result. Okay, uh, if you are not aware about it, CSIR has recently released their result in which they have divided the overall students into three categories. I have discussed about them in detail in my previous videos. So you can watch that in overall result about the overall result. But here I am going to talk about especially for category three of the result. Okay, why? Because there are a lot of students who have qualified this around 10,000 plus students have qualified this and it is important to talk about it because this is happening for the first time. Okay, uh, previous to this or before before this cycle of the CSNET exam, we have never seen category three type of result. So that's why I thought of making this and I thought of explaining you the things which you need to know about category three result. Now, why you should watch it? So those who have already qualified in category three, of course, you should watch it to get to know that what are the benefits of this particular result. And for those who are preparing for the next cycle, you should know because in the coming CSRNet cycles also, you are going to get the result in the same way. You are going to get category one, category two and category three type of result. Okay. So you should, uh, you should be aware about it that what exactly it is. So let's talk about this in detail. Okay. So in India, when you go and you join as a PhD scholar, there are two types which are there okay of the phd scholars one who are getting fellowship who have qualified certain exams or who have uh, gone through certain uh, like exams or certain criteria to get a particular amount of fellowship these are a jrf fellowship which they get okay which is currently 37000 uh, for jrf and after two years it escalates to 42000 per month but there are also a section of students who want to do PhD, but they do not have any fellowship as such. They just want to get enrolled into PhD and complete their uh, like uh, PhD degree. So uh, till now, before this particular cycle of exam, till now, different universities of India, especially those who are in who are like uh, like they are enrolled into UGC or they are approved by UGC, all these universities like Delhi University. PHU, Banaras Hindu University, AMU, Aligarh Muslim University, HCU, Hyderabad Central University, all these universities which are there, JNU, even JNU is there. So all these universities, okay, even like universities, uh, which all these state government universities also, all these universities which are enrolled with UGC, they used to conduct their own entrance exams, okay, and you have to sit for their entrance exams separately, okay. And once you qualify their entrance exam, you have to go to their interview panel, you have to perform in their interview. And once you qualify both those stages, you are, you get enrolled into that particular university. Okay. So you, in that case, you are called as a, uh, as a PhD student over there, but in that case, you don't get fellowship. Now, when I say you don't get fellowship, that does not mean that you are not going to get any money over there till now, till the previous cycle of exam you used to get or the, those students who who get enrolled like this they used to get 8000 rupees per month okay i know this is very less but this is what it is okay so 8000 per month is what these students used to get now csi and ugc realized that apart from our exam which we are conducting for national wise uh, selection of students into phd and for those who are going to be eligible to become assistant professor uh, these universities are conducting these exams separately and especially after covid this cycle of this exam they all got disturbed especially for because there are so many universities many times it happens that the exam dates or the interview dates of these universities collide and then the students have a lot of problem sitting or giving the exam of all these different universities so csir and ugc decided that now let's let's make another section or another category in our own result where we will decide or we will tell that which students are eligible to apply under these condition apply as a phd scholar without fellowship without fellowship again i am saying when i say without fellowship that means you will get some minimal amount of fellowship okay so based upon that they have now made this particular category 3 now what are the benefits of this category 3 result okay so with this category 3 result first thing is you are not eligible for fellowship okay which category one result students are they are getting grf fellowship so you are not eligible for that second thing is that you are not even eligible for applying as assistant professor in future okay so if you complete your phd also you cannot apply for assistant professor because in order to apply for assistant professor you need a net qualified certificate 
so you have to actually qualify at least in category 2 to apply as assistant professor in future okay so what is the benefit of category 3 the only benefit of category 3 is that you will be able to get admission into phd now it's not like that if you have qualified in category 3 you are going to directly get admission into phd no it is it does not work like that you also have to go through the interview again okay but the only benefit is that now you do not have to fill form of different universities separately you have qualified under category 3 now you have to wait for the application portal which these universities are going to open up and just apply uh, when these uh, universities are going to open up their portal you have to look upon that and based upon that criteria you can go and give your interview and based upon your interview performance as it is mentioned that 70 percent weightage is given to your entrance marks which you have got in your csr net exam 30 percent weightage is given to the marks or the score which you are going to get in the interview based upon that overall merit will be made and based upon the merit you will be selected or not selected in that particular university for pursuing your phd program okay so the overall idea is that this particular category 3 only makes you eligible to get into PhD or to take admission into PhD subject to that you perform well in your interview. Now many people will say that it's illogical or it's like, like getting into PhD without a fellowship is like who does that but I will tell you that there is a big number of students who take admission into PhD. Uh, based upon uh, like without any fellowship even I was one of them when I joined my PhD at that time the result of CSR net was not announced so when I joined I went through the application portal in a university I qualified that I went through the interview I went through the, uh, the conference and then I uh, got the admission into PhD although I my JRF uh, like my JRF result was pending that time and when it came I started getting my fellowship as per the JRF rule but the time when I took admission I was also one of those who have not qualified JRF okay so there are a huge number of students who do that now what what is the benefit of that so I will tell you one thing which I have seen uh, in me and in my colleagues or in in the people around me who have given or who have joined along with us the thing is that once you join into PhD or once you take admission into PhD the first year of PhD is not that stressful because you have a lot of uh, like coursework to do you try you, you you are still learning the basic things now this is what I believe okay this is what I felt and this is I think this is what I have seen around me that once you get into PhD the block or I would say the hesitation that goes away okay and when you sit for the exam you perform well I don't know why but it happens okay because I think that there is no much pressure on you because when you have not enrolled into PhD that time you have two pressure you are dealing with two pressure whether I will be getting into PhD or not and the second pressure is whether I will be able to qualify this exam or not but once you take admission into PhD even though you do not have fellowship but still you are into PhD and then at least one of the issue which was bothering you it goes away that okay now you are into PhD okay so that's what I think that's that has helped a lot of students along with me who have taken admission into PhD and many of them qualified JRF in the next cycle of exam okay so that this is one of the psychological benefit which I would say and the second thing is that there are many students who are at the verge of their age limit okay because you know that for CSI or net to qualify for JRF there is a certain age limit and uh, they are at that particular verge of age limit so instead of sitting and waiting for the next cycle to be completed where they might lose the opportunity to get, to qualify as JRF it's better to get into PhD and like take admission into PhD so these are certain benefits which which I think okay which is very I would say it's a silver lining of it We're talking about that what are the implication of this result whether these universities are going to conduct their own entrance exams now or not I think that because the sole motive of conducting or making their result into into three category was to uh, remove this uh, exam thing from these universities so I personally think that these universities are not going to conduct their own entrance exam uh, because they now already have a certain number of students who have qualified category three result they will only conduct interviews now so now the cycle of these universities or the intake of these universities is also going to be little fast and flexible because they, they do not have to conduct entrance exam now okay CSR has already done that part so all these exams which used to be like a RET research interest test or different exams which these universities have their own name 
I believe that they are not going to be conducted. And now I'm not sure because there is no official announcement about it yet. And we are not aware about that, whether this is going to be, how much this is going to be implemented. But this is what logical analysis of this says, okay. Which institutes are going to accept you for your result in category 3? So I believe, again, there is no, like, no definitive explanation about it anywhere in the brochure or anywhere about it. But I believe because this exam is conducted by CSIR and UGC both, so I think that all the CSIR labs and UGC approved universities, they are going to accept a student based upon category 3. Now, again, IITs, ISERs, NITs, these are different things, okay. They are AICTE approved, they are not UGC approved institutes. So they do not fall under this category. So you cannot go into IIT with this particular result and try to get into it, okay. I don't think that is going to happen for IITs, ISERs or NITs or IASC for that, it's not benefit. But for UGC approved uni uh, universities and for CSIR labs, I think this is going to work and you can get into PhD into these places. So this is all about category 3 result. This is all the benefit which you are getting. What are the things you are not getting? I already told you. First thing is that you are not eligible to get a particular fellowship which a JRF student is going to get. Second thing is that you are not eligible to apply as, as assistant professor even if you complete your PhD. So you have to qualify under category 2 you have to give the exam again and try to qualify at least under category 2. So These two things you are not going to get. The only benefit which you get in category 3 is to apply for PhD in universities and in CSR lab as per what I know till now. Okay. So that's it for this particular video. I just thought of making it. I just thought of discussing out with you. If you have any other queries, you can ask me out in the comment section below. I'll try to answer you over there itself. And that's all. I will see you guys in the next video. Till then, have a great day. Bye-bye. Take care. See you guys.